Hello friend, I have a story to tell you today. It's the story of my daughter's life. She died of lung cancer at the age of 39. And I have written a book, a book which I think is helpful to us today in the very difficult circumstances in which we live. It brings hope and encouragement and a sense that all is well. I hope you enjoy it. Episode 22. High time I ride home. The surgeon says he's keeping her in hospital for as long as it takes for her to be safe. His word, and I love it. Susie, after a second visit, also reports mega progress since last Saturday. Very chirpy, moving the leg about like there's nothing wrong with it. And the best bit? Her hair has started growing back already. Very cute and furry. Shirley's fingers are not to be outdone. Found out today that 90% of the leg tumour was dead, killed by the chemo. As I start chemo again, please, can we pray that the last 20% of cancer cells in my lungs are killed this time round? Thank you for your ongoing love, prayers and support. When the day dawns for Shirley to go home, I want so badly for it to be a comfortable, pain-free journey. So I put a couple of soft pillows in place to support the rigid, plastic-encased limb. It's raining, and after several trips to pack Shirley's possessions into the boot, I'm very cold and very wet. At last, it's all ready. I push a wheelchair with umbrella attached into her ward. The goodbyes and warm good wishes cling wrap our hearts. I struggle, really struggle, to get Shirley into the car and comfortable and out of the persistent rain. It blurs the road, confuses what I can see and pushes my stress levels right over the top. Shirley bravely grits her teeth, but I know she's not comfortable. I pull off the road, open her door and tug and pull. I know I don't really improve things. I also know that the cold wet rains soaking my back and neck. Pale and sore, Shirley holds on. She doesn't complain. My appreciation of how kind she is deepens the further we drive. It's raining hard. The traffic's hard and frightening. The traffic's heavy and frightening. And the leg throbs, but she doesn't even murmur. At home, Shirley takes off her leg brace and pulls the crutches nearer. I'm beginning to get the hang of this, she says. Thanks to lots of ongoing physio, and her sheer guts, the legs bending quite a lot, and the scar, pampered and greased with vitamin E oils, looks good. She feels well, and thinks it's time to stop all the pain pills. Late one Sunday afternoon, when no one else is around, Shirley decides to take a bath. Luxuriating in the warm water is pure bliss, and worth the long, slow, halting hobble up the stairs. I find myself cutting Shirley's toenails. It feels macabre. I'm thinking as I do it. The last time I did this, you were a little girl. What do you see looking back, Thigh? Dan's question surprises me. The curate at Greyfriars and Tonya have come to break bread. You know, Dan, we cried for two days when we realised that all they're trying to do is to win Shirley time. Then Shirley says to me, Mum, I surrender my life to God. If he does not plan to give me a long life, I'm now okay with that. I've been amazed to see her accept, little by little, some of the things she adamantly rejected before. It's a bit like God is feeding her his plan, bit by bit. For me, in all the waiting, we've done so much of it. I've learnt how weak I am. Many times God has made the impossible possible. Now... I wait a little better, and peace, tangible and trustworthy, has not left me at any stage. We've all suffered, there's no doubt about it. But for me, the question becomes, have we suffered well? On the 29th of September, Shirley sends out a round robin. I thank God that the op was completely successful and my lungs are greatly improved. I should regain full mobility in the future, and the surgeons have declared my leg cancer-free. 
I'm walking well without my brace. I feel great and have no infection, but only tiredness and a lack of energy. God has raised up an army around me. Wow, I feel overwhelmed. God has carried me so far, and he will continue to be faithful. Please pray that the next round of chemo will wipe out the remaining 20% of cancer. Thank him that unpleasant symptoms have been at a minimum, and in between treatments I've been feeling strong. Pray that the chemo won't now impede rehabilitation. I need my leg to bend beyond 90% to be able to ride a bike, among other things. I've received so much emotional and spiritual healing already. Pray that I may have a long, cancer-free life ahead. Thank you so much for standing by me. Lots of love. Somehow Joe, Katie, Laura and Gaynor all managed to perch on Shirley's double bed with her. Whenever they visit, Joe and Katie first make for the drawer in the kitchen where Shirley keeps antihistamines, especially for her two allergic friends. They sip coffee and fill Shirley in on what's going on in the world. She loves this because without them, she doesn't have a clue about what's happening out there. Then Gaynor asks, How did you feel about the op? I don't think I dealt with that particularly well. I think I kind of went off into a bit of a black hole. I just didn't speak to anybody for about two days and just waited it out, really. Oh, shells, the girls respond together. How awful. Mm, but once the operation was over and I could see I had ten toes and my leg was okay, I felt in a different place. I could see the surgeons were happy too. I felt very peaceful and I felt that God really had his hand on me. That was a good time. I mean, obviously the leg was really uncomfortable and painful. I had lots of morphine. <laughs> Maybe that's why I had such a good time, she laughs. I don't know. So how do you feel now? Katie flicks her long brown hair out of her eyes. I had to learn to walk again, which was scary. At the same time, it was a bit of a challenge and I kind of quite enjoyed that. Shirley nods her head, completely covered now with soft brown down. I think I definitely saw the learning to walk again stage as something I could actually contribute to. You know, just lying in bed and having drugs poured into you. You know, you just, you completely, nothing you can do makes a difference. But now, here was something I could work at and get my teeth into. It did feel like we had completed phase one, she nods to emphasize what she's saying, and turned a corner. Yeah, all of that was a good time. I felt very safe, secure, well looked after. I had a lovely private room, my little sanctuary. The reassurance of having people praying was amazing, and so many of my friends filled my room with flowers from top to bottom. Yeah. It was a peaceful time. What did your oncologist actually tell you? Joe stretches out to get more comfortable. The surgeon reckoned that they got the whole tumour. All the mechanical bits are working. They kind of fitted together, no problem. He said about 90% of what they removed was already dead. Wow, escapes from all the girls, more or less at the same time. Obviously, I never forget the cancers in my chest. But it's logical that if the treatment worked in my leg, presumably it's also worked or working in my lungs. And what about, again, is very hesitant. What about the future? How do you feel in the whole battle? Where's God in all this? God is with me. I've never believed that the cancer came from God. I've always believed that it is something that he is using in my life. I'm pretty sure that, right, you know it's been tough, but we have come so far, and now God is going to glorify himself. So we'll see restoration. We'll see healing. The end is in sight. At this point, doing physio and getting back on my feet, I feel quite bullish, really. We've got thus far successfully. <laughs> I think the word bullish is a good word to use. I'm feeling quite sort of, 
Yeah, we're going to beat this thing. It's going to be okay. Katie, Rose, Tom and Ava visit. Ava has moved on from tugging at Shirley's headscarf to exploring the world on two legs. Her little eyes light up at the sight of a whole staircase leading to a wonderland upstairs. I follow up the stairs, ready to catch. Then I spend half an hour teaching her how to come back down again. We turn around and slide on our bums. We are so pleased with ourselves. We do it again and again. While we are so busy, Tom and Katie Rose are able to visit with Shirley, and Katie's eyes fill with tears. Then Shirley tells Tom, My love for Jesus is not just lip service. It's real. I've been reading from my book, Mum, Please Help Me Die, the story of my daughter Shirley's battle with cancer. If you'd like to get a copy of the book, please contact me. You can do that at the following email address, thai at mumplpleasehelpmedie.co.za. I hope you'll be with me again next week. Goodbye.